Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick cast video. In this video I'll be talking about how to set up actions and how to get the most out of them. So, we can get started by creating a new actor and then going to the actions tab of that actor. Here you'll notice that this system gives us two by default, a stat test and a saving throw. Uh, you'll notice that they have their own number of choices and you know you can click on them and and it'll autofill into you know what you're using here. But I also want to make note or mention that they have this thing called hotbar highlighted. So what that means is when an asset is on the map, it'll show you which actions are hotbarred. You can also view them down here in the bottom if you're impersonating that character as well. So we're going to add our own action to this actor. And actions save down onto individual items, individual spells, and onto individual actors. So you can make unique actions per, per actor, per character, per weapon. I'm going to add a new action called new action here. And then I will want to put in an equation that I want it to roll in the chat log. So in this case, I probably want to just do something simple. I'm going to do d20 plus pound dex, right? Which will add my dex bonus into uh, the chat log. Now pound dex is using a macro shortcut, which is configured by the system, but we won't talk about that in the video because it's a little bit more advanced. Um, once I do that, I can then hotbar the action and you'll notice it appears down here automatically. I can save my changes, then I can roll the new action and it will roll and add my dex bonus automatically. So in this case now I have a plus two and you'll notice the plus two is reflected here. So cool, that's the basics of uh, actions. You could add in as many as you want. Um, if you wanna do something more advanced, we'll keep talking about that in this video. But for most cases, that's probably all you need. But if you wanna get a little bit more automation out of it, we can go back in and we can start to abstract it a little bit. So what I'm gonna to do to this action is I'm going to give it uh, two choices, a option to add a strength bonus and an option to add a dex bonus. So first I'll need to configure a variable for this equation. I can do that by doing pound or the dollar sign which both do different things. The pound sign basically evaluates that variable at runtime. And then the dollar sign is just if you want to put text in or some, some sort of like saved equation. It's you, most cases you want to use the pound sign. So pound uh, type equals, and then you give it a default value, which I'll have a default to the dex roll. Once that's done, I can save it and it'll still only appear as one action but what I can do with it now is in the choices I can go in and add a new choice strength and then I can add a new choice dexterity then I can choose to overwrite that context type here with what I want to change it to, which is pound strength. And then this one, I can overwrite the type with pound dex. So once you have that configured, you go back to save changes, and then now you have your two new actions. You can go strength, and you can go dex. But you'll notice that they're not actually showing the bonuses here. That's because I forgot to add in a reference to that type variable here. So now that I've referenced the type, I can go back and you'll see the appropriate bonuses being added for each one. Now these ones, these, uh, these rolls don't really have any flavor to them and they kind of look a little strange because you don't really know what you're rolling. So we're gonna go back in, we're gonna set up some flavor text. And then now, it'll give you some sort of message here. 
Great, so now we have some pretty basic options. Um, one thing I will want to do is I want to make sure I have a label that will appear in the chat log for when I when I make a choice. So I'm going to add the uh, stat name context into the equation. And then I'm just going to pop over to the context areas and adjust the stat name here so I can reference it in the flavor text. So now I can go over to my flavor text and I can say rolled stat name. And then I can go ahead, re-impersonate my character. And then now it will show up down here. So, as you can see, this is, it, depending on how complex you use these systems, you can get a lot out of them. But I'd say this is probably a general case of what you want to do. Over-engineering in tabletop RPGs is probably not good. <laughs> but... I'm about to show you how to do that. <laughs> so, so now I'm going to show you some of the more advanced stuff. Um, if you got everything up until this point, good. You're probably all set for most cases. If you want to do some more advanced stuff here, I'm going to tell you how. So, once we open up the raw JSON, you see there's a lot of stuff going on. Number one, the hot action here, this... Uh, this gives you an option to put a macro in here. So if you wanted this, you know, this action to appear dynamically, you could do it using a macro. So like you could only have it appear to uh, clerics, or if somebody had like less than half health, you could basically show the action conditionally there. Um, we're not going to do that now, but I just want to give you a heads up that that's what that does. Now I can add in something a little bit more advanced called the pull field, right? So this pull object here will give me options to actually pull and save data from the targets I'm targeting. Um, in this case, I'm going to just check the armor class. So I'm going to say pull target armor, and I'm going to put the macro into basically save this value for me to use in this equation. So there's a shortcut in this system, pound colon AC. That's what I'm going to use. But essentially what this is going to do, it's going to take the armor class from whatever I have targeted, and it's going to expose it to my macros. So what I mean by that is now I can reference this target armor field anywhere in my in my macro here we'll say ac at target armor right and so now save my changes now when i have this guy selected who i will make a new guy actually make a new guy with a different armor class so he's going to have armor class 15 right put them on the map and then now when I go and I roll one of my tests do it down here you'll notice that my armor class appears right here which pulled dynamically from this guy here if I selected myself and I did that same test it would give me a different armor class now this becomes especially useful because not only can you do it there, but you can also roll follow-up dice and and also apply calculations to these these enemies. So I'm going to type in the effects, right, which is simply an array of calculation objects, which all they are are basically a target field, which I will put to counters HP, and then a equation field, which is the equation that gets uh, basically operated, and we're just going to do HP minus 5. So what this is going to do is it's going to remove 5 HP from my target. Right? So go on and save my changes, and then I will click on the enemy I want to attack. 
Oh, and then you'll notice I made a little bit of a spelling error. It should be counters, not counter. And then bam, I just made an attack and it applied hit points. Now this is pretty powerful. If, if you think about the cases you can use, um, it, it really comes down to how you want to use all these tools. But but yeah, that about covers it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I will try to document the actions so you can know exactly what they do. But in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.